to say, but Alex Pereira has been accused of assault on a woman at UFC 302. The woman in question has released a video going into great detail about what happened. We're going to play the video and react to it and break it all down straight after this intro. So here's to the fighters, the fans and the game. Here's to the blood, sweat and tears and the fame. And here's to as in key, you're ready to go on the brutally honest MMA show. Come on, come on. to be crazy not to take me back okay this is like my 40th time trying to make this video so i'm gonna try to do it again without crying <sighs> alex Pereira's assistant translator i don't know who he is to him his name is mel my friend followed him on instagram over two months ago he dms her after she follows him Asks her questions like how long she had been doing kickboxing for, how she got into it, stuff like that. He asks her if she's going to the fight in New Jersey that we went to. I don't know what number it was. I'm not into it like that, like she is. I, I, this was my first time ever meeting Alex or knowing who he was. I'm not a huge UFC fan. I just got into it because my friend was into it. <sighs> Alex's assistant, translator best friend, whoever he was, his name is Mel, asks my friend if she wants to meet up with him in New Jersey when she goes to the fight. He also says that Alex is wondering if she has a friend for him. I know it sounds stupid and unbelievable because I couldn't believe it myself. Why is this guy asking a 20 year old girl to put her, to put him on with one of her friends when he's a 30 year old however father so who should be able to just like talk to a woman his age at the fight it was planned out on purpose because he does this all the time hang on hang on that's the bit where i'm a bit confused like how do you know how do you know he does it all the time i get yeah so far it all adds up it, things like that happen so it's plausible but then how do you know that happens all the that he does that all the time? How how do you know that? Where's this information come from? Where's the proof for that? My friend sends Mel, the assistant and the translator, I whoever he was. He never really gave us an explanation who he was. She sends him my Instagram. Mel shows Alex my Instagram. Apparently, the only thing he said was Chama. I'll try and find the text proof where my friend was telling me this. Which is disgusting now that I know what his intent was. I mean, if he if he sent that, like, Jesus Christ, we'll show you the videos. He was expecting something. Let's, let, let's say that. And he shouldn't, but yeah. We go to New Jersey. Mel hits up my friend, invites us both to a private training at a gym called Cruise MMA where Alex is training. We're the only women in there except for this older woman who's married to one of the people that's also f sparring. <sighs> I'm hoping I can find security footage. My friend spars with him. I videotape the whole time and I'm sitting down watching. I can post the video that I took also where my friend is sparring with him. Him and Mel take me I mean, and my friend. You should see how provocative the, the videos are. I'll put some at the end, but after the training I do not understand he comes what on to the me, intent was. Goes behind me, looks at my ass, and approves to his translator, which Hang is on. also I... disgusting. Now that I know what his intent was, like I was cabbing or something. How did you not know what the intent was? Yeah, don't like that, but. At that point, when he's like circling you and like eyeing you up at, like a piece of meat, at what point do you do you not know the intents? I mean, surely at some point you recognise that. Mind you, this man doesn't speak any English. I don't know what he's saying the entire time. His translator is translating for me everything he's saying and everything I'm saying. Fair enough. <sighs> He tries to kiss me outside of Cruz MMA gym. I grab his face and I That's push bad. him away. I will try Condemning. to find security footage from a building around it if possible. But we, 
I, 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 we get the proof. I mean, condemning a man like that, there's got to be some more proof. We leave the training. They then invite us to like a meeting or like something that was outside where they were like signing stuff, I guess. I don't know. But we turned it down because it was outside and it was super hot and we had already done our makeup and gotten ready for the UFC fight that night. So they then invite us to dinner before the UFC fight. We were going to go out, according to them, um, but he sends us an address then our Uber takes us to a very nice hotel where Alex is staying and a bunch of, I guess, UFC fighters are also there. His assistant and translator, Mel, brings us into this fancy hotel. I can find security footage proof of this also. And it's just a bunch of, like, UFC people sitting in a circle. And Alex looks up at us, looks angry as fuck, and tells his assistant, Mel, to take us out of the hotel. And everyone is looking at us like, who are these girls? Why are they here? I don't know either. I I'm just, like, there because they asked us to. And, like, I didn't realize they were bad people. Um, he makes us leave the hotel and he brings us to the Courtyard Marriott across. I mean, I believe everything that's happened has happened in the way, but what I'm finding struggling with is at what point, like, she's not talking from ear experience, like, at this point, like, I was, like, freaked out, but I felt like I, I had to go along with it. That's usually what you hear in these kinds of stories, like, I was, felt, I couldn't escape or I was just pushed into scenario after scenario, but it's, I'm not hearing much from the personal experience at this point. It's just kind of like fact checking what happened. But at this point, like there's no, she's saying it's creepy. Oh, that's creepy. Like in hindsight, but not in the moment or finding that odd. The street from it. They have two hotel rooms that they have already bought um, for that night, which is disgusting. It was all planned out. I mean, if you go into an event, most people do get hotels. I, I don't understand. Oh, that's disgusting. Like, it was all planned out. People... People tend to get hotels when they go events, theatre, cinema, you know, like where USC events, sporting events. If you're out of town, out of city, you kind of that's kind of normal. I don't understand what's disgusting about that, especially like sometimes I I, I go away with my friends, we get separate hotel rooms. That's I don't don't know what the intent of getting an hotel room is. I that's alluding to something where it's premeditated when I mean it could be I'm not saying it's in but I don't find that necessarily straight off the bat weird they take us to the courtyard Marriott across the street from the actual hotel that Alc is staying at we go to the restaurant in the in the like lobby of the courtyard Marriott I can find security footage proof of this also I mean security footage of your whereabouts that yeah, that's. I don't think the dispute is that you're not hanging around with Alex Pereira that night. It's more dispute over the allegations. Like, don't be. I don't think you need to prove circumstantial that you were in his vicinity that night. I mean, it helps, I guess, but. They buy us a flatbread pizza and then they ask. Well, Mel is asking all of this. Alex doesn't speak any English, he's just translating. Mel asks us how old we are. I said, I'm 21. My friend says that she's 20 years old, not old enough to drink alcohol. So he talks to Alex, tells him how old we say we are, and then they buy us, I think, two glasses of wine. So mind you, they're buying alcohol for a 20-year-old girl that is not old enough to drink alcohol, and this is on security footage. Didn't make me sign an NDA before he did any of this. Like, just did it because he does this all the time, probably. It was so routine and planned out. Stick, stick to your story. I mean, if other stories come out or you've spoken to other people, then yeah, maybe allude to that idea. But this all, like, constantly pointing in people's heads as you're talking that it happens all the time. It's the second time that that's been brought up. Uh, probably doesn't mean necessarily and like focus on your story and delivering your news, not alluding to 
other things that may or may not have happened in and 2021 like in the UK it's 18 so I don't know we we don't see that as a big thing most people in the UK start drinking at 16 getting into pubs and at 17 um 18 is the legal age here so we don't see that as a problem I guess they're giving us drinks Alex won't get off of me I'm not into it because I don't know this man. I don't like being touched if I am not, like if I don't know you and I'm not comfortable with you. Even if you're my family member, I just don't like being touched. I'm starting to get tipsy and I feel sick because I don't do well when I drink. But I'm trying to calm my nerves. He won't get off of me. He keeps asking me to go to the bathroom with him, or he's asking Mel, and Mel is telling me this, so I guess this is how he gets away with it. At no point has she said that I want to leave or she's trying to get out um, of, of the situation or talking to a friend, or it, it's very much like she's very focused on what he's doing and not how she was feeling in that moment. So like these stories tend to, when people release these stories, they talk about their personal, personal experience and the trauma that they were going through during that. I'm not debating that it didn't happen. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Because he didn't technically, well, no, because he did it. He just technically didn't say any of it to my face. He said it through his translator and his translator said it to my face. But his translator wasn't the one who assaulted me. He's telling his translator to ask me to go to the bathroom with him. I'm telling him no because I don't do that. I, I get uncomfortable and nervous. And as much as you guys think that I'm this, like, Whore. I don't know what I'm allowed to say on TikTok. As much as you guys think these things about me just because of the line of work that I do, I just do what I have to do to make ends meet. That has nothing Only to fans do with model. anything. I don't put out the first time meeting somebody True. because I have a lot of trauma True. and I get n nervous and scared. I will try to find security footage. Legally, they have to be able to pull this up, right? Like, Alex can't, like, somehow, like, get it erased. That would literally not be fair. I'm going to try my hardest to find the security footage. If it actually ends up, like, going to court or, like, something happens. I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. I just posted it because I, like, it, I just wanted to talk about it. <sighs> I mean, I'm not... I'm not sure why you've taken to social media to release the story without one going to the police and then the second maybe getting security footage to back up your claims. Like, I don't get why people are going into this. We'll just release it through social media first and then then we'll go down the legal route. Like, what world are we living in, people? What fucking world is this where you're not going to the authorities, you're not going to the papers, the media, or even getting the security footage, which now you're saying that you'll go get, like, put some, like, why are we releasing it to social media? I get if maybe no one's hearing your voice and then you decide to try to take it public, fair enough, but at this point, why, why come straight to the social media just to, and there's a lot of things that are feeling a bit off for me, like, there's, she talks about the trauma, like, yeah, past trauma, it can cause people to say and do a lot of strange things. It's just, there's something not adding up for me. I go to the bathroom with my friend after Alex has been coming on to me the whole night and I feel sick and uncomfortable and like I'm about to throw up. I tell her in the bathroom at no point during this whole entire visit with these people are you to leave me because I'm not comfortable. Okay, I think that's the first bit about is saying how she feels in this situation about feeling uncomfortable. I mean, if you feel, if someone's giving off those creepy vibes and they actually touching you inappropriately and you're treating you like a piece of meat, trying to kiss you and doing all those things, I'd feel a bit more uncomfortable if it was un, un, unwanted, uncomfortable at that stage. I think it's gone past uncomfortable at this stage. Still, still not asking to get out of the situation. We agree that we won't leave each other at any point because Mel, the assistant and the translator, is also hitting on my friend who's 20 years old. I don't know how old this man was. We agree not to leave each other, but we'll stay in the situation. The one that is very uncomfortable at this point, well, it's beyond uncomfortable. If this is if this is the, what's happened up until this point, 
then it's beyond uncomfortable. I'm trying to tell Alex's assistant to tell Alex that I don't put out like that after I meet someone for the very first time and that I need him to get to know me and to work for it. I quote said to his translator. What the okay, so not so yeah, I I mean like those weirds like yeah, I need need someone to work for it. If you can bang me then yeah, you've got work for it. I don't know. Like this this there's something about this that feels off. I'm not denying that it did happen. I'm playing devil, devil's advocate here. Let me know what you think in the comments because so far this is just, it, it's not their usual kind of, but then what is usual? What is usual? But right now it's, it's seeming there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sketchy things going on here. To be a prude and annoying, but I told him, I was like, how do I say you have to work for it? His assistant laughs, tells Alex, and Alex tells his assistant to tell us that he really likes us and he's going to take us on a trip to the Dominican Republic to get to know us better because I guess he's trying to, like, convince me that he's not, you know, just trying to take advantage of me. So I'm like, okay, like, that's great. I don't have a passport. Like, can you, like, let me know, like, when this is happening so I can, like, pack and, like, get ready for it? Like... I mean, I make my own money and I don't need this man's money. This was is not me trying to get his money. I literally could not care less if I don't get anything out of this except for to find my own voice again. I mean, earlier she was saying that she makes ends meet by doing OnlyFans content and that's how she gets by and she's struggling for money and now she's saying it's not about money. You know, if you're already doing certain things that go against who you are as a person then i I'm, I'm not saying anything bad but like people can easily then go one step further to you know i mean the the the, the pages weren't doing that well i just wanted to talk about my story i was not expecting his fans to be as bad as he is but i guess i should have known <sighs> We have to split up because it's time to go to the UFC fight. His translator and Alex go on their own. Me and my friend take an Uber. It goes terribly. The fight ends. Um, afterwards, his assistant Mel sends an Uber to our location after the UFC fight and brings us back to the courtyard, courtyard Marriott where we were going to go out. He was gonna, we were going to go there and they were going to drive us and they were talking about going to... I don't know. They were talking about going to strip clubs and they were just to be clear. Also that picture that I posted where everyone is saying that it looks like I'm a fan that asked him to take a picture with me. I did not ask for that picture. I asked for no pictures. I didn't know who this man was. My friend asked for pictures with him after asking me to record her sparring with him. And then he asked on everyone that I know and loves life. He asked for pictures with me. I did not ask for those pictures. He asked his assistant to ask my friend after we took, after he asked to take the pictures, he asked his assistant to ask my friend to have me send the pictures to her. And then she sends it to my assistant because he wanted the pictures because it was probably a trophy for him. I did not ask for those pictures. Trophy. I, I, I mean, it's a stretch, isn't it? It's a stretch. I mean, taking a picture, no, no, what I, I'll, I'll, what I'm finding very difficult about this whole thing is the fact that, that she's focusing on the wrong things. Like she's going in great detail over a picture, not the things that are important. Like going massively about this picture. Like who cares who, who asked for the picture? If he did, she did. It's a picture. Like that doesn't prove anything. It doesn't signal any kind of like she's using words like trophy. There's no proof of intent over a picture. It's, it's ridiculous to even bring this up and go into too much detail about it and then speculate around it being a trophy. That's besides the point, but basically his assistant sends us an Uber to where we are after the UFC fight and brings us back to the Courtyard Marriott where we were supposed to be waiting for Alex to get back from an interview, I think he said. And then we were going to go out. He was talking about going to strip clubs and like having a fun night while we were all in New Jersey, New York for the weekend. We wait for like two hours for Alex to come while his friend is on the phone talking about like 
kids with cancer and big money transfers and things that had to do with Alex. And we were like, hey, it's getting kind of late. Like, is Alex coming? Like, what's the plan? Should we just go back home? Because we're kind of tired. Like, if we're going to have plans, can we, like, get on with it? Because it's already getting very late. Okay, so there was an opportunity to go after feeling uncomfortable, after him being creepy, pervy. All these things, there was an opportunity where you even had a chance to leave the situation. Um, should we just go? I mean, not I want to go, let's go, and they stopped us or we made, we were made to feel so uncomfortable we had to stay. We're going to stay in the situation that is uncomfortable and weird and creepy. Hmm. At this point, I think it was like two or three in the morning. <sighs> Eventually, Alex comes to the hotel room after the interview that he was at, and he says that he doesn't want to go out. He wants to enjoy the time that he has with the people he's with. I mean, <laughs> it's a reasonable thing to say. She's trying to use negativity ar around normal things, like trying to make him seem suspicious and sus. Uh, and they're not at all. There's just <laughs> there's nothing wrong with wanting to just chill out. Some bullshit like that. And then he takes off his clothes, gets into bed, Creepy if true. orders food, and then is trying to get me to get into bed with him. My friend and me and the translator are all sitting on the couch, and he's just sitting in bed staring at me and telling his translator to tell me things oh. and trying to convince me to get into bed with him. Okay, I want to hear this. I want to hear the reason why she chose, after all these weird, strange things, to then get in a bed with the... UFC champion. I eventually get into bed with him because I was naive, I guess. I didn't think that anything was going to happen. Okay, now she's playing playing the naive card. She did not think anything was going to happen after all the posturing and intent before that she said she felt uncomfortable. He was PV, he was creepy. And at this point, it, it has been said that, oh, I, I just didn't think anything would happen. I didn't think he was interested in me. I didn't, I, I, you didn't know when I was a OnlyFans model and I put out a lewd, a lewd content all the time. No, it was just a, it was just a, I just fell into the bed. My friend was there with me. I had told her not to leave me at any point. She had told me not to leave her with the assistant at any point. I thought that we were going to be fine. I thought I was going to be able to maybe try and get myself comfortable by getting into bed with him and cuddling with him. If there was people in the room, I just have problems of my own i have trauma this is not the first time that this has happened to me i it's just naive i guess i not the first time that you put yourself in a very uncomfortable situation that you thought was going to be cuddles and rainbows i mean i'm not saying that that stuff doesn't happen i'm just questioning it, it, we've got to play devil's advocate because this is a strong statement to make about a UFC champion who has sh never ever shown any inkling of being a weirdo, pervert, or anything of that kind. Not saying that it can't be true. I'm just saying the story is not stacking up. The accounts that she's ear side of the story is not stacking up. And it's sounding more and more suspicious as the story goes on. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I got into bed with him. My friend was there. So was the assistant. I thought I was going to be fine. That stuff happens, though. He starts touching me down there repeatedly. I keep pushing him off. I keep pushing his hand off. I keep bringing his hand back up to, like, my, my waist so that we can just, like, cuddle. Because I'm comfortable with cuddling. I'm not comfortable with putting out with somebody that I don't know. I just met literally for the first time. He's huge, scary, doesn't speak Which any of fair. my language. And fair. I wasn't comfortable putting out with him because that's just not what I do. <sighs> and I got the... People find themselves in these situations and then they feel uncomfortable to leave. But it was the fact that like, it wasn't like it went from zero to one, un zero to 100. There was very much, very a lot of signs and the, the uncomfortable feeling and disgusting feelings were there prior to this happening. And they chose to stay. That is what I can't wrap my head around. If it was like, okay, I'm naive 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 none of the creepy stuff before the kissing the all, all the the peeviness before did not happen and then you're like okay i'm naive i got on the bed i thought it was going to be cuddling then he forces him 
art he forces himself on her and that is a completely different story what she's saying is there's loads of creepy things that led up to this and she felt uncomfortable she had many opportunities to leave the situation and chose to stay it's almost like trying to paint this narrative that he is a bad dude well, he is a bad dude in, but in a fighting way but trying to paint the picture that he's a sex pest a, a predator that preys on people and it was all premeditated planned she spoke of trophies she lose, uses loads of um buzzwords and key terms to try paint this story as uh, as she goes but not too much about how she's feeling in in the numerous amounts of situations that have built up to this so far he keeps touching me i keep pushing him off eventually me and my friend to say that we're very tired and we would like to go to sleep they turn all the lights off my friend and the assistant get into bed it's a queen size bed that they get into i'm in a queen size bed they'll right start next to it with decide to stay Alex. me and my friend are on the inside of the bed looking at each other Stays under the blankets he keeps pulling the blanket over me, keeps trying to touch me. I feel suffocated. I feel uncomfortable. I don't know what to do. I've pushed him off so many times at this point and he's not taking the hint. And these men are clearly not caring about my comfortability. Mind you, again, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was naive, I guess. I, I guess you could say I asked for it by getting into bed with him. I didn't know that this was gonna happen. I'm pushing him off of me. He won't get off. Uh, yeah. Uh... I mean, no one, no one's ever asked for it, and no one ever deserves to be put in that situation. If you, if if you're not wanting it, then signs should be read. Guys, just move on. Don't want it. Find someone who does. Simple. You won't find yourself in these creepy, weird situations. Um, yeah. Communicate. Don't put a language barrier up between you and a woman never that that is a recipe for disaster boys yeah learn from this situation don't be uh, don't ever put yourself in a vulnerable vulnerable situation because this works both ways this isn't just uh it works both ways because it can very easily turn into something like this where you can get proper fucked over it boys so don't put don't ever put yourself in a situation like that Off. He eventually pulls my underwear and my pants down to around like halfway on my thighs and I push him off again he gets out of bed, he starts screaming and putting his socks and his clothes on. I'm terrified because I don't know what's happening. My pants are around my legs and after I told him no and pushed him off and he's screaming in another language. Me and my friend are looking at each other hiding under the blankets like about to start bawling our eyes out. And he starts telling his um, translator that he doesn't want to sleep in the same room with him and my friend and that he wants them to leave. His translator and my friend leave the hotel room. His translator and my friend leave the hotel room. He immediately starts trying to take my clothes off. He starts trying to take my socks off. I try to tell him no because I have blisters on my feet from walking around New York in heels for like 10 hours the night before. And I had band-aids on my blisters and they were going to get ripped off with my socks. Again, I the details on the, the very minute insignificant things like the shoes, the blisters, you know, the, the, the details on that are very like extreme. I, I think they might have, they, they've done stuff. I think they've done stuff, but I think it was more consensual than what she's making out. We'll never know, well, unless it goes to, you know, there was evidence or something that can actually physically prove what happened. Uh, but the the details seem to be very focused on the the very in, insignificant, significant, insignificant things, the insignificant details. Not saying that it's not happened, but just just saying it, it's far, sounding odd to me, boys. I tried to explain to him don't take my socks off please he didn't understand that so at that point i'm like okay fuck i i'm in a room with a huge man that doesn't speak english he's not understanding what i'm saying he doesn't give a fuck because i've pushed him off so many times and he doesn't care and he like got up and screamed and scared me into staying in the room with him and making his assistant and my friend leave the room 
at this point, I know what's happening. I've been through this before. I know that it's just easiest if I just shut my mouth, d do what I have to, put on whatever performance that I have to to make it end. <sighs> he puts me on top of him so that we're... I don't know how much of this I'm allowed to say on TikTok. He puts me on... So, so far, if, the, if this is true, it's disgusting. Alex needs to be persecuted for it. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel, something about the story does not feel right. It feels awfully suspicious. We've got, you know, innocent until proven guilty. That is what I stick to. Uh, just because someone's saying something doesn't mean it's necessarily true. And the the story that has been given to us just, just doesn't add up. There's a lot of weirdness about it, inconsistencies. Uh, if true, it is terrible and disgusting. There's no, there's no if, buts, or maybes. Like you can say, yeah, she's a certain character. She pro plays this certain character. It doesn't mean, like she says, she doesn't need to put out. She doesn't deserve to be made feel a certain way. That is a fair, a fair comment to say. But I don't think it went down exactly how she's trying to paint out on top of him so that we are i don't know if i'm allowed to say this but he puts me on top of him so that we're six i think that it's just going to be like normal like he I, he just pressured me into having sex and he scared me into having sex with him it's whatever like it's nothing that hasn't happened to me before like i'll just you know keep it inside like i usually do and just live with it He starts using multiple of his fingers, forcefully pushing them into my ass. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not. Everybody's asking for an explanation, so here it is. This is literally just the truth. It's disgusting and embarrassing, and I've tried to make this video so many times, and I keep crying, and I just feel disgusting and humiliated and violated and... I know people are going to laugh at me and people are going to say that I deserved it and think that it's funny. No, no one, one deserves it. If, if this is true, no one deserves whatever. it. Like, I just thought that like this would help me heal by talking about it. He's basically fisting my ass at this point. Um, it hurts really bad and I'm blacking out and disassociating and like just trying not to be there while it's happening. Before his assistant had left the room, I had told him to please tell Alex that I was very nervous. I don't put out on the first time meeting somebody like that. Please emphasize to Alex that I'm very nervous. I haven't had sex with a lot of people. I have a lot of sexual trauma. I, I freeze up in the moment and I am not able to have sex with people like that when I first meet them and I told him I told his translator to tell him that <sighs> he picks me up from off of on top of him asks me the only time he spoke English this entire time that I was with him was to ask me to help him put it in I tried to put it in, but I was nervous, so I couldn't, so he did it, and he put it in my ass, and then he assaulted me. Afterwards, he got up, he took a shower, I laid in bed, just kind of like disassociated, not even really like realizing what had just happened. I'm scared as fuck, and I don't know if I can use the shower, and I'm scared to ask him. So I just go to the bathroom and I sit on the toilet for a few minutes while I literally I come back to bed after going to the bathroom. He kisses me on the forehead and he spoons me to sleep. His translator and my friend came in the next morning, woke us up, I get dressed, they get us an Uber. We go back to our hotel, pack up our stuff. And that was, that's it. That's what happened. I I don't really know what else to say and I don't really like expect everybody to believe me. I, I knew that nobody was gonna 
believe me just based off of that TikTok that I posted. I guess I just wasn't expecting as many <laughs> threatening comments. We've only heard one side of the story and it sounds pretty fishy to me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you agree? Like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.